Today, we are going to explore the Hindu traditions, virtue and practices of Sri Lankan Hindu devotees. For thousands of years, Hindu temples have been constructed, allowing people to immerse themselves in an atmosphere where they can worship a particular form of God, gather with other devotees and become more connected to the Absolute. Most Hindu temples are usually open to the public. It is important to enter each one with the understanding that it is a sacred space. Being conscious of certain etiquettes can help one navigate the hallowed grounds of a temple respectfully. Before entering a temple, it is generally recommended to be clean and modestly dressed. For both men and women, this generally means not wearing shorts and keeping the shoulders covered. Traditions can vary, however, from temple to temple. Some place a greater emphasis on dressing simply, requiring men to be shirtless and wear on the unsoon cloth. Temples are like homes of the gods. When you enter, you are a guest in that home. Before entering a temple, everyone is required to remove shoes and wash your feet. It is common practice for Hindus to bring a flower, fruit, or some other item as an offering to the god of the temple they are visiting. Though it is not required, presenting an offering is an act of service that can deepen one's sincere devotion. Applying viputhi or sacred ashes on the forehead is one of the important custom in Hinduism. Applying sacred ash indicates us that the human body will turn down to ashes at some point of time. It is also believed that the sins are destroyed and will create an aura around you, helping to feel the divinity within if holy ash viputhi is applied on the forehead. Temples have a brass bell hanging near the entrance, which devotees ring before entering. Ringing the bell informs the deities you've come to seek their association. Upon entering a temple room, one of the first things you'll notice is the presence of one or multiple statues of deities. In a temple, the deity's form can be seen, the offered flower sand incense can be smelled, the water and light can be felt, the food can be tasted, and the sounds of the bell that is rung as puja is being performed can heard. In this way, all of a person's senses can become spiritually enlivened. Hindus worship many gods and goddess in addition to Brahman, who believe to be the supreme god force present in all things. Some of the most prominent deities include Brahma, the god responsible for the creation of the world and all living things. Vishnu, the god that preserves and protects the universe. Shiva, the god that destroys the universe in order to recreate it. Devi, the goddess that fights to restore Dharma. Krishna, the god of compassion, tenderness, and love. Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth and purity. Saraswati, the goddess of learning. These deities are central to all temple activities. Though true divinity is in everything, and can therefore be meditated on at any time, any place, Having a physical form to worship is vital in helping employ the five senses in worship.
The cow is sacred in Hinduism, so Hindus do not eat beef. The oldest known mention of the religious importance of the cow is found in the Vedas. Cow statues are visible in temples. Cows feed and looks after by devotees. The architecture of Hindu temples is, if anything, extremely intricate and complex. There are several styles of architecture through which the design of a temple evolved. The ornate architecture and elaborately decorative sculptures are exquisite and are definitely worth a visit regardless of whether or not you understand the religion and values. Although it is widely known that India is home to some of the most beautiful temples, Sri Lanka too has its fair share, with Hinduism being followed by a significant population across the country. Ornate sculptures that compose the Sakara literally mean to mountain peak and refers to the towering structure that is typical of all Kovals and how a temple is identified throughout the globe. These soaring towers are usually made up of hundreds of sculptures that include gods, worshippers, erotic scenes, animals, and floral and geometric patterns. Flower garlands are an important feature of the deity's costume. There are men sells them to worshippers at the entrance of the temple. Fruits and other offerings can buy from the stalls outside the temple. Hindus use a variety of methods of worship during their prayer in the temple. Meditation, puja, haven, darshan, ardi, bhajan, curtain, 
and Japa, the Bhagavan Gita places importance on the impact of worship. It is used as a guide to encourage worshippers to become aware that they should be focused on God and continually be devoted to Him. This will ultimately help them achieve moksha. Puja refers to worship, particularly of the sacred image. Puja usually involves bathing and dressing the deity and offering various auspicious items, such as water, perfume, and flowers. It often culminates in the offering of food and is immediately followed by the Ardi ceremony. Ardi, Asaramanathat, takes place in front of the deities where all the four elements, fire, earth, Water and air are all represented in the offering, bhajan, singing and other music as part of worship, skilled dancers perform for the deity as part of the offering. Navaratri puja is done for nine days. This puja may be done towards the goddess, Shakti and she is the main deity for this puja. This nine days puja is segregated into three parts and each part contains three days of each, therefore, in these nine days, first three days puja is for Sri Durga Devi, the next three days, puja needs to be done for Sri Lakshmi, and final three days for Sri Saraswati. On tenth day, all of three deities are kept together and should do the puja to complete the Navaratri puja.
Diet in Hinduism signifies the diverse traditions. Hindu scriptures promote a vegetarian dietary ideal based on the concept of ahimsa, non-violence and compassion towards all beings. Exploring different cultures around the world is not only a fascinating journey but also a transformative experience that enriches our understanding of human diversity and fosters greater empathy and broadens our perspectives, break down the stereotypes and encourages us to embrace and celebrate the richness of cultural differences. Special thanks goes to my loving friend, Subashini and her adorable son, Hadas, for the opportunity given for us for Great Day Culture Exploration. Hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.